You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network. You're listening to the Full Count Major League Baseball Podcast, your local source for trending Major League Baseball topics, season analysis, fun objective discussions, and up-to-date coverage of the Toronto Blue Jays organization from right here in the NACA region. Here are your hosts, Brandon Caputo, Reese Tumaney, and Colin Ward. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first installment of our brand new show on the network, the Full Count MLB Podcast, right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network, your February 22nd, 2021 edition, your source of North American sports coverage by sports fans, for sports fans, the Ritty Writer in the beautiful Niagara region. Find us on social media for updates, giveaways, and sponsorship promo codes by following the podcast on Twitter at Armchair GM Pod, as well as this show's podcast at AGM Full Count Pod. You can like us on Facebook and Instagram by searching the Armchair GM Sports Network, and we're on many different platforms for you, including Spreaker.com and the free Spreaker app, as well as Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, CastBox, and Deezer by searching the Armchair GM Sports Network, of course. And lastly, our beautiful user-friendly website, ArmchairGMSports.com, for all things regarding our network, including articles, podcast episodes, sponsors, and contributors. Everything's on there for you guys. Please give us a like and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us right now. As always, I am one of your hosts of the network. My name is Brandon Caputo. You can follow me on Twitter, at Caputo13 of the Canadian Z, and I'm very happy and pleased to be joined on the baseball portion of the network by two friends of mine and uh, really happy to have them as part of the network as contributors now for the baseball portion. They are Colin Ward and Reese Dumaney. You can follow them on Twitter at Reese Dumaney and at Colin Ward underscore 14. They are the co-hosts of the Owen 60 OHL podcast guys. Pleasure to have you guys as part of the network and uh, getting started with our 2021 MLB season coverage. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're excited to be a part of this. Uh, Reese got the memo with the opening day uh, show with oh, all yeah, the Tiger yeah. stuff. I clearly didn't, but <laughs> the most was... wonderful time of the year. The Tigers are going to suck, but you still got to rock the colors. I love it. Hey, quick quick question for you guys to start the show. Um, the best sound in sports, ball to glove, playing catch. Ball to glove. Or the bat. <laughs> or yeah, a bat, bat or the, the ball, sound of a nice. bat, yeah. Ball, no. You know when you're just at the yeah, – bat. When you're at the stadium and you hear batting practice going on, like when you first get oh, there, yeah. it's just like you feel like you're in a different world. It feels like you're at home at, when you're at the at the, the stadium. So with that said, to open up the show, we have some breaking news. I'm going to play the intro breaking news for this. The Detroit Tigers have been officially eliminated from postseason contention in the 2021 MLB season. To Reese's, I'm sure, dismay, but I had to throw that in there at the beginning. I've been waiting to to pull that one out uh, for the first show here for a few weeks. But Hey, they have a 2% chance. Yeah, hey, can you imagine being Baltimore? You have a 0.0% chance of making the playoffs. Yeah, we will, That's too bad. we will get into the odds next week on the show. But uh, with that said, guys, on the show today, we're basically going to just uh, an intro for the show, just discuss, uh, you know, why we love baseball so much and, you know, our memories of baseball growing up and why uh, baseball uh, being on the network is so important to us and why we wanted to uh, – get this uh, podcast going uh looking forward to uh you know some big things from this in the future and going forward uh, with these guys so uh, also we're going to discuss uh on the show obviously we're going to be discussing some toronto blue jays news uh what that uh, their season's going to look like up opening up and uh kind of what their projected lineup and uh colin's going to talk about uh, some prospects that he expects to stay with the jays uh with that as well and then some key dates uh, for minor league baseball and uh, MLB as well. I've got a game uh, for these two gentlemen to play revolving uh, regarding 
minor league baseball. So with that said, let's get into the opening segment. And today it's brought to you by Carmine's Pizzeria Italiano, home of the best pizza and wing combos in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Call ahead or call for call ahead pickup or delivery. Carmine's Pizzeria Italiano, way too good. So speaking of way too good, Reese, start us off here. Why are you a Detroit Tigers fan? And uh, just uh, talk about, you know, you growing up playing baseball and uh, some of the rivalries you've had with uh, the other co-host you're calling uh, playing in your playing days. It, it's funny how many people actually ask me why I'm a Detroit Tigers fan. Like, you wouldn't believe how many people walk up to me. I'll just be with my Tigers hat, whether it's at the ballpark or, like, you know, I've worn it to a Jays game a couple times where the Tigers haven't been playing just because I don't have any Jays gear. So um, I grew up in Windsor, pretty much, as depressing as that sounds. Uh, uh, Detroit right across the border. <laughs> yeah, I know, eh? Uh, Detroit right across the border. Um, I was, my dad's a Tigers fan. He always went to their games. He always reminds me of, um, one of the best teams ever to play baseball, the 1984 Detroit Tigers, where they started 35 and five, uh, with a roster like Jack Morris, Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker up the middle, the best double play combo in major league baseball history, by the way, uh, Lance Paris catching Cecil Fielder. So That kind of started out, and of course, I was four at the time when I moved to Windsor, and I was, you know, young, stupid. I was a kid, and I was like, hey, my dad cheers for the Tigers. I'll cheer for the Tigers, too, and he had season tickets as well, so that uh, helped with it, so we'd go to games every so often, and uh, yeah, that's kind of where the Tigers got into things, and um, in terms of me playing baseball, I've been playing since the age of four, started with the Good old Windsor South Canadians and Little League, still an underrated uh, development league, in my opinion. But... Good baseball over there. Good baseball over there around Windsor. Windsor yeah. Sarnia, there's some good baseball teams. Yeah, yeah, well, in my association, uh, Windsor South Canadians, we made uh, a few Canadian championships. I didn't play for them at the time, but. Um, and then, yeah, lived in Windsor till. The middle of grade five, I think I was 10, 10 in grade five. I don't know. Not a big math guy, but um, yeah, I moved to Cambridge, but played in Ancaster and uh, made it to a Canadian Little League Championship final where we met uh, Team British Columbia and got destroyed 11 to 1 because British Columbia, it doesn't snow there. It just mainly rains. So they're, they're really good at baseball over a lot there. More. Yeah, yeah, they're very good. I think they made the Little League World Series 12 to 15 years in a row. The champion was out of BC. And then I think Quebec broke that streak a few years ago. I'd have to double check. but um, And then got out of Little League, started playing for the good old Cambridge Cubbies, the good old Ooh. pinstripes. And then we got rid of them. That played was... them a lot. Those are, nice, those are nice jerseys. Those are nice jerseys. Yeah. First jersey I had nice. with the... With uh, actually second jersey I had with my name on the back. The first one was in T-ball. Shout out to T-ball. Nice. <laughs> we didn't have I, man, I love T-ball is so underrated. Like Ontario they, yeah. baseball, it like they they expect you to go right from coach pitch. So like that underhand um, stuff. Yeah. Hey, I got a story pitching. about uh, coach. I have a story about coach pitch there. I'll get to it after. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. That's what's re- like. All these great hitters. And I'm gonna. Think of Canadian ones for a second. Joey Votto, he played T-ball. He never played rookie ball where there's pitching machines and stuff like that. So uh, OBA is kind of ruining that. But T-ball, really good time. And then uh, tell us about some of this, how you you and Colin met playing baseball and how that came about. Yeah, so it kind of, it's funny. It's actually really hilarious uh, what happened a few years ago. And uh, so, yeah. You don't have to bring it up if you don't want to. Oh, I'll bring it up. So, yeah, when I started playing in Cambridge, that was really the first time that I had played OBA and, you know, going against Colin and Sino. And at the time in Pee Wee, you're not at the age where you're going up to go, hey, what's going on? Like, you're not really having conversations. Like, you see Miguel Cabrera and Francisco Lindor screwing around on first base. Like, you don't see that in Pee Wee. So, as we started to get older and to – uh, into Major Bantam. That's when I moved to Brantford, started playing for the uh, for Brantford, I guess, Junior Red Sox, because it's technically not the Brantford Red Sox. But, um, yeah, made the midget team. And uh, this is where the stuff – but it's funny. 
Because I always say, and Colin and I, we met in an inter-county final. Well, wasn't even close. We, we, we cleaned house. Was it 12 wow. to 1, the final score? I think something like that. And uh, But it's funny because I always say, oh, we beat you guys. We destroyed you. I didn't even play in that game. I was a first year. I didn't even play in that <laughs> game. So uh, that's kind of pointless to say, oh, I beat you when I technically did it. My team did. Team game. But, race, team uh, game. Race, team, race, team game. Yeah. Exactly. I was supporting from the bench. Um, oh, yeah. And then hey, it, you, it was funny because my during my first year of college at, uh, at Niagara College, well in Ontario, Shout out really recommended to Alumni anyone. there as well. Yep. Cool. Um, Colin came in for a... Yeah. Was it the open house or was it just like a... Yeah, it was the open house. Yeah, yeah it was the open house so. at Niagara. Yeah, so it was the open house, and I see this guy walking in. Might have been you or your dad, I can't remember. Had a Simcoe Giants hat on, and I'm like, uh oh, I'm going to chirp this guy so hard. <laughs> that was me. No, that was me. <laughs> and then my teacher. Hey, hey I, perfect, I got a quick story it. about no, that. No, you don't have a quick story. Let yeah. Reese finish, his, pe- finish his piece first. You won't get your time. <laughs> uh, so my, prof- my professor, since they like to be called that, um, said, hey, do you mind taking these guys on a tour of, you know, the oh. radio station, television studio, and stuff like that? I'm like, you know what, sure. Because I had to run to get to an Ice Dogs game, because, you know, host Dogs TV, I was very important. Um, Not a big deal. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, what's going on? My name's Reese. And they're like, hi, Colin, Dave, and is it Helen, your mom's name? Yeah. I yeah. knew. I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm here to show you around, see what's up. And on a tour, we walked over to the radio station, and uh, I saw a Simcoe hat. And I think I mentioned something. I'm yeah, like, that would oh, be me. Play f- yeah, you played for Simcoe. And he goes, yeah, I'm a- born in 98. I think I remember you. And I'm like, really? And you were like, yeah, I was the lefty catcher on Simcoe. I'm like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did like, like three years it- later, we got a podcast. <laughs> we were like- yeah. Well, no, it, it was even funnier because two years after that, you, you know, decided to go to Mohawk. And uh, yeah, <laughs> ended up we both ended up interning uh, at TSN eleven fifty. Yeah, cool. I am going to mention that name very little on this show. I am not, I'm not going to get into it, but it's no longer a station for anyone that doesn't. It know. was a good time. It was, it was, a, good it was time. a good, good time. Yeah, we both ended up interning on the morning show with Marsh and Mello, and yeah, and then I was bored when watching game. snowstorms. Yeah, my boss came up to me and was like, hey, have you ever thought about having your own show on here? And I'm like, no, I haven't, but that's a good idea. And he said, yeah, like, whatever you want, like, let me know if you want to have a co-host, one of your friends or someone from the station would want to do it with you. Just like, let me know and we'll see what's up. And I'm like, "Okay, that's cool. So I messaged Colin sometime within the next week and said, hey, what are you doing? (laughs) <laughs> he was like, oh, not really much now. And I'm like, what about uh, doing a base or uh, Ontario Hockey League show? Because it's really not too big of a market when you you think about it with OHL shows. I mean, you guys, you've got the Dog Pound podcast going for the Ice Dogs. You got the O Show boys down in Windsor who took a big L on uh, on Sunday. Um, you had the OHL fanboys, but they had stopped doing it. You had uh, Mike Farwell and Chris Pope doing their thing in Kitchener. So we're like, you know what? Let's do something a little bit different because a lot of these shows are just having guys on and telling stories instead of actually looking at the league as a yeah. – like as they do in the NHL where you're analyzing different things. And, you know, we're not trying to – we're not scouts by any means, not even close. But we've been watching the Ontario Hockey League – God knows how long me going back to oh, Windsor Arena with the Flyers and you with the uh, London Knights, Patrick Kane, John Carlson. So, you know, we thought, thought it was a good idea on. and you know, it was a good yeah. idea. I but, mean, it, but that yeah. all stemmed from you guys meeting at baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it all comes back to baseball. Be a lot of times where we can just tell stories about coaches we've had about teammates we've had there's mm-hmm. a lot of umpires like yeah, yeah it's, umpires. it's funny if colin would have never really? worn yeah. that simcoe hat at the open house and we wait we might would, not all be no, talking I, I about these days no, yeah yeah really? this might have never happened that's so again that's hey that's hey that's my thing though that was my thing in baseball literally all i had to do like if i had a business card would be like 
Colin Ward, left-handed catcher on the bottom. I mean, <laughs> then everyone would remember me. Yep, everyone. So you're, you don't remember a left-handed <laughs> catcher. That's that's what's funny. You never forget a left-handed catcher. And, and I did it like all the way up, like through yeah. midget. So that's yeah, how you guys met through baseball. Stop, but... it's good. I mean, again, I'm tying it all back to baseball here. Colin, go ahead. Talk about why you're a Toronto Blue Jays fan. Why on God's green earth are you a Toronto Blue Jays fan? And uh, just, you know, you oh, playing you baseball throughout the year. Well, we'll get to that. But I want to hear yeah. your story first. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm a Jays fan. My dad was always a Jays fan. Growing up, Roy Halladay was a big deal right around here. And, I mean, it was just a local team being the only – Canadian team. I mean, Montreal Expos were a big deal too, but Toronto being so close, we used to go to a game once a month. I mean, it was a big deal growing up, going to the Rogers Central Sky Dome at the time. Uh, got to see a lot of good players play out of there for the Jays. I mean, being Canadian, being Canada's team, it's just, why not? And then playing baseball through your, through your younger years, yeah. what position did you play and why did you choose that position? I just play anywhere. I'm a team guy. Uh, <laughs> started utility. Here we go. <laughs> utility. So oh. I started off and I started off my hometown of Delhi, Ontario. I coach here in Delhi now too. Um, then I went to Simcoe and Bantam. Won an OBA second year at Bantam. Not a big deal. Um, a B division. B, still a big deal. Um, then in midget, first year midget, we lost in the ICBA finals to Brantford, unfortunately. Uh, we didn't play too good in that game. Um, we had a short bench. I mean, we'll get into this story I think, I think, one day, but your coaches had the wrong mindset. So that would be a story. Another, uh, yeah, I think that was another uh, situation, too, that I didn't think we were ready for that game. But, oh, well, it was still a cool experience. It would have been nice to win, but we didn't. So can't take that back, but we want to know BA. So that was cool. So um, you know what? You know what though? I uh, played first. I played some right field. Played some uh, catcher. I pitch now. Basically now I just pitch and play first base. Okay. So it was. It, did you guys ever face each other like a pitcher, pitcher hitter type scenario? I don't think. I know. I didn't. I don't think so. I we probably I face, did. I face, did like I face your brother a handful of times, I face your but. Yeah, you would have yeah. faced my brother when he was pitching. I got a hit off of him. I remember you were catching, and I was so confused. Man, you know what's funny, though? When my brother pitches, <laughs> you, like Simcoe, they always had one like girl player, like one female player. There was always one every year. Kane, in all of, like, he's my brother, in all of his years pitching against Simcoe, not one time did he get a girl out. And this isn't a knock, it's just... That no, that's the way it was. He couldn't figure a way. He went, whether it was a walk or you know a few times he would hit them or you know they had his just, number. It, 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 yeah, it was just it was funny. It mm-hmm. was really funny. <laughs> yeah. So I know I faced him. I grounded out to third, and then the next that bad, I got a hit. <laughs> were there any oh. good? Were there any ever good chirps with you that you guys can remember? Like maybe somebody you guys were standing no. on the base together. Oh, like... I didn't. I didn't. I have. Him. I, I have everyone. one. There, there was there are other catcher who is like. He was a monster. Like, he's massive. And um, if you know Picard's Peanuts. Yep. His, like, the guy who owns that, his son was on Colin's team. And yeah. he was, like, you, you, you think of catchers. You're like, oh, like, they're a little bit bigger so they can block a little bit more. You know, they may be a little bit overweight and stuff. I was never overweight when I was. I was probably underweight for how skinny I was. But. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, he he'd chirp. be the he'd be the one catcher I'd chirp on Simcoe. Wasn't calling. Hey, you know, yeah, hey, everyone loved me. Everyone loved playing me. <laughs> I, I mean, I chirp you on the hey, bench. Hey, not to your you'd come in. The... Well, thank you. Yeah, we'll get in. We'll get into that another <laughs> day. We'll, we'll we'll get it. We'll get into more day. stories. I'm sure throughout the years. Oh, yeah. I just got a quick one. I just got a quick one to add to that. So if I'm catching, you come in the batter's box. It's like going to the coffee shop. There's going to be like a five minute conversation. I'm going to get in your head. But for me, the best team that I love playing against, and Reese might say this too, was Guelph. You love playing Guelph in London because London, the London Badgers program is like playing the London Knights of the OHL. They're, that's what they are. They have wristbands on their arms. They're yeah. like, they're, they're way up overboard. 
where yeah, yeah it's like they're we, Patrick Mahomes looking at a play getting ready to yeah, take a snap you should have saw that yeah you should have saw that it's like a college offense you know yeah. friends, like, when they change the play then like the offense just stops and look at the sidelines that's them oh so the they, catch, they were the heroes shakes, the, the pitcher shakes off the catcher and all of a sudden it's like time everyone looks at the dugout oh, <laughs> so, the, so they catcher, were they were major leaguers the they out. were getting prepared but, yeah essentially and, hey, I uh, and hey, I have some blonde moments, so I'm in the batter's box, and they uh, do this. I'm like, "What the heck is going on here?" That's me. <laughs> but uh, them and golf. I love playing golf because golf always like to talk a lot, and you know me, I'm a talker, so that was always fun playing golf. Wow, never would have thought that. Get teams. You, were, you you definitely <laughs> would have gotten people's heads being a catcher. You probably yeah, uh, you probably would have driv- driven me nuts. I probably would have did done one of those. Uh, we're back in the, the day. Ball. No, back in the day where the the batter he like he kicked the guy right and he kicked the catcher. I forget what I forget what blunder it was, and I can't even remember the team. Oh. But I remember he got hit with a pitch, and then he just yeah. dropped his bat and kicked the catcher. <laughs> that would have been me to call him. We'll figure who out who that was for the next show, but uh, that definitely would have been me. But speaking of me, uh, I'll just quickly touch. I don't have no huge baseball background like you guys as far as playing the game, but uh, I can actually show you guys. I have a framed, like in a frame, my dad kept it, of me in Yankees baby clothes. So I have the, the clothes still Ooh. in like hey. a frame. And uh, yeah, so from a from a early age, I was engraved in the uh, evil empire. So I really didn't have a choice with that. And obviously, growing up um, in the two thousands, obviously those the Yankees dynasty was something that I guess I was just used to, and I didn't really appreciate it when I was younger. But especially now, because it's been feels like forever since they've won championships. So I wish I would have appreciated those years more when I was a kid. But it just seemed like second nature when you're that young and you keep seeing your team win. It's not really that special. But then when you get older and you don't see your see your team win, you're like, wow, I really wish I would have appreciated that. So. I'm a Yankees fan, born and raised, and obviously growing up listening to John Sterling on the radio. So I still buy the MLB package to listen to John Sterling on the Yankees radio. So other than that, yeah. I I played uh, like a few years of baseball, but for the most part, I ran a softball men's league softball team for five years, and nice. that was uh, yeah, Is that the team was. Going? I I got the team started up, but it was just. It's a lot running a softball team. Uh, it's a lot more than you think, especially when you've got a lot of personalities. I'd, I think I'd rather coach children than coaching my twenty mid twenty year old friends. So I don't know if I'd ever run a team again, but I'd sure love to uh, to play at some point. But the most interesting thing is I got to bring up since we're talking about the how people met through baseball. I have to bring up the story and I and whatever my side of it is and whatever Reese side of it, of it is, you can kind of piece it together on where the reality was with it. But the first time I ever met Reese was, I guess, two years ago now. I don't know. twenty October of 2019, I guess. Um, I think it was October. Yeah, go- October, November, yeah. Yeah, October, November 2019. We're at the Meridian Center uh, getting ready to talk to Coach Burke uh, after a Niagara Ice Dogs game uh, post-media hey, scrum. Game, by the way. Yeah, I, I can't remember. But yeah, I, I, I was at every game that year, so. Um, but you were there, obviously, as a uh, alumni and uh, as a very, uh, you know, big deal, I guess you could say, from I, formerly of Ice Dogs TV. But I didn't know who you were at that point. I was obviously first year media, didn't have any clue. So I'm just down there, and I'm, 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 I'm walking, I'm, I'm walking down there. <laughs> I walk down there and I'm like, who is this guy? Because we're all waiting for coach to come out so we can start the, pre- the, the, the scrum. And I'm, and I'm like, I don't know. I got to say hi to this guy, but I got to somehow break the ice. So I saw that Reese was wearing a Detroit Tigers jacket. So I had to just say, man, I, I don't even remember exactly what I said, but it was somewhere along the lines of, man, nice to meet you, but yikes on the Tigers shirt or Tigers jacket yeah, or something, something like, like that. that yeah. And I don't know what was going through your head, but I'm just like, oh, my God, I wonder if this guy's going to hate me for the rest of his life or if he actually liked the fact that I chirped the Tigers. So, Reese, what was your response to the first time we met there and kind of piecing yeah, together what I said? Typical what was typical Brandon it? response there. <laughs> Tigers. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was funny, too, that I had a – had tiger stuff on and they were playing the windsor spitfires that was actually kind of hilarious and that's kind of one of the reasons that i wore that stuff because i wanted to introduce myself to the radio guy for the spits uh manny pava but uh yeah that was that was funny i, I always like hanging around the scrums because i knew all the media people from niagara uh, rod Mahood, um bill potrick's like everyone 
uh, down there, DJ and Matt, although DJ had moved on to uh, to radio for Niagara. But, yeah, I just – I like being down there, and I'm like – I look like a clown anyways. I'm wearing a hoodie. I've got a, a Tigers hat on. Like, they know me, so, like, I can get away with it. But then, yeah, this guy – and I can't remember what you were wearing. It might have been the gray sweater that you have. Yeah, the Ice Dog um, jacket, yeah. Yeah. And you say that, and I'm a first reaction, and I probably can't say these words on air, but it was to the tone of, who the bleep is this guy? What is he <laughs> <laughs> Why is he chirping me? That was kind of random. Like, But then I'm like, okay, I can't be, I can't be mean here. Like, I'm still, well, at the time in 2019, I was still uh, 20, 21. I'm like, they can't really be making enemies. So I'm just like, hey, man, the Tigers suck, and I know it. and It's okay, essentially. And then, yeah, we kind of got to talk. And then I, I don't know if I asked you if you were a Yankee fan or if you told me you were a Yankee fan. And I was like, oh, that's unfortunate, as I say to everyone who says any other team besides the Tigers or Red Wings or any team that I like. And, yeah, that was funny. That was really funny. So you're funny. telling me if somebody told you they were like an Arizona Diamondbacks fan, you would still say, wow, that's unfortunate or something. Oh, Hundred percent, man. If they, if someone said they were a Kansas City Chiefs fan or like a New England Patriots fan when they were winning those six Super Bowls, I'd still say that's unfortunate because I just. <laughs> hey, I'm a Tom, I'm a Tom Brady fan. I'm oh, a that's... Tom Brady fan. Sure, yeah, that's unfortunate. But anyways, tying it I'm back to Tre- I'm a Trevor Bauer fan. You just won the Cy Young. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, those types of guys. Yeah, but no, it was just funny that our the first time that we had met. At the through OHL hockey was talking about baseball and kind of breaking the uh, ice with the Tigers comment and looking back on it I'm thinking like wow like why did I say that but it ended up uh, now hey, we're here on a hey podcast Brandon, together what what would you have said if I didn't have any Tiger stuff on I like prob- if I was just a guy that like had a golf shirt on or something I probably would have come to you with a more respectful and professional response possibly okay. <laughs> but like, it was just hi, the fact that you were wearing Brandon. Tiger stuff. I figured you were just like, I didn't even know who you, because I, I honestly, like you you weren't in the media box, so I had no idea like what was going on. So I thought you were just like visiting somebody or you were a friend of somebody's and you were just walking down, you f- somehow found your way into the uh, into the media area by knowing yeah, somebody. I still have my key card to the building. But... Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, you, your, your key card still, well, you have the key to the city. But yep. no, that was, uh, that was an interesting right. moment. Everyone so. knows them. So yeah, yeah so the- <laughs> essentially I went down there to say hi to Jonah D. Simone because that guy's the real OG. He's a but, yeah. Oh, he's a beauty. But that's a good uh, half hour intro for our show today on uh, why Reese is a Detroit tri- Detroit Tigers fan, why Colin is a Toronto Blue Jays fan, and why I'm a New York Yankees fan. So hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of uh, inside insight to uh, why. We all love baseball and why we're doing this podcast. So a uh, little bit of personality there. You know, you need to get a little bit of personality. We can't just oh, be... Oh, there's going to be a lot of chirps oh, on Oh, there's going to be a lot of there's personality lot. on this show. If you thought this was going to be the MLB Network's version of the show, you got another thing coming. That's why Not even close. we want to be entertaining for you guys. We want to give you guys a little bit of our personalities because why else would you tune in for that? We, if you wanted to hear just plain old paint dry analysis, you just go watch the MLB Network. So Or uh, MLS. Yeah, I mean, no no offense to MLB Network. They do a good job, but, I mean, th- this is not what our show is going to be about. So hopefully you enjoy that. And uh, with that said, we're going to take a commercial break on the show today. We're going to come back and uh, discuss a little bit of Toronto Blue Jays. I'm going to play the game with the boys that I had discussed in the uh, the I'll Open about, major league, about minor league baseball. And uh, with that kind of segueing that into uh, what that's going to look like this year with some uh, key dates for uh, minor league baseball, which we will be covering uh, on the show with the uh, hopefully start of the Buffalo Bisons season. So stay right here. We'll be right back on the MLB, uh, sorry, the full count MLB podcast and right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network. Carmine's Pizzeria Italiano, serving traditional style Italian pizzas made with the freshest top quality ingredients. Loaded subs and their famous chicken wings. Winners of the Reader's Choice Diamond Award. Four years running from Niagara this week for best pizza and wings in Niagara Falls. Home of the best tray and wing combo in town for the price and quality. Open daily from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Located on the corner of Drummond Road and Dunn Street. Available for call ahead pickup or delivery at 905 374 Four four zero zero. Make sure to like them on Facebook and view their website for their menu at carminespizzeria.ca. Carmine's Pizzeria Italiano. Way too good. 
As we all adjust to this new world that we're living in today, masks are now mandatory. And Niagara's own Custom PPE is Canada's leading face mask provider. Visit them online at customppe.ca and choose between several mask options with different colors and sizes. Add your organization, company, or team logo to you make your face masks unique. Available to purchase online 24-7 at customppe.ca and shipped within one week. They have the best prices and quickest turnaround in Canada, and no order is too big or too small. Also offering custom floor stickers as well as face and counter shields for your business or workplace. Visit customppe.ca and use the code armchair at checkout for 20% off your custom or blank face mask today. Custom PPE, Canada's leading face mask provider. Attention job seekers, if you are currently looking for work in the Niagara region, you owe it to yourself to check out the services provided by the Niagara Employment Help Center, located at 6100 Thorolstone Road, Niagara Falls, directly across from the Camisos Plaza. Their free services include resume and cover letter writing, community resource and referral information, local labor market information, job search strategies, assistance with clarifying employment training and career goals, employment counseling and job search support, second career information and registration assistance, and all their services are currently provided by appointment only. So give them a call at 905-358-0021 or visit their website at ehc.on.ca, the Niagara Employment Help Center. This Employment Ontario program is funded by the Government of Ontario. You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network, the Niagara region's best local source for North American sports podcasting coverage. By sports fans, for sports fans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Full Count MLB podcast as Colin is rocking out to our bumper theme for the Full Count MLB we podcast. We could totally be an air, gu- air guitar band. Oh, wouldn't that Rock be band. something? Rock. But uh, <laughs> with that said, today's segment is brought to you by Custom PPE, Canada's leading face mask provider. Best prices, quickest turnaround, built from right here in the Niagara region. Order today at customppe.ca. We've got ours. Time to get yours. Custom masks to keep us safe. Custom PPE. Ca. So, guys, let's take a look at the... Actually, you know what? You guys want to play the game first? Ooh. Play the game. You want to play the game fun. first? All right. Let's get into the game first. And I've <laughs> got... Fun, okay. Like, so, we're going to get into minor league baseball and the Blue Jays. But first, got to play the minor league baseball game with the guys that I've been teasing for a week. So, with that said, I've even got some uh, catchy game show style music for this. All right. All right. So, the game today we are going to play is going to be called Name Which Team. (laughs) It's going to be basically, I've got the map of uh, the 2021 Minor League Baseball affiliates, and you guys are going to tell me uh, which affiliate is this team with. So, like, if I say the Buffalo Bisons, which I'm not going to say, you say the Toronto Blue Jays. And all these teams are real believe it or not some of these teams are real did not did not send this to you guys prehand because i didn't want you guys to obviously be spoiled with it so with that said <clears throat> we're gonna play and start off with who which one do i want to start off with we got well the, like how do we answer do we just re- whoever like answers first yeah well, yeah i mean you guys you guys can both jump into it first whichever right. one you guys get one guess each essentially so make it good if you don't want to jump into it strikes, yeah don't yeah there you go three strikes and the game's over so there you go so the salt lake bees oh, oh i saw that crowd. angels LA angels yep colin got it the salt lake bees you know why i know that you know why i know that why and they'll be the show there you I got go. drafted by LA. Okay. Triple A get uh, lifer. Next, I'll Never give you. I'll give you team. at least if it's triple or double. I'll give you that. Okay. So next, we've got. There were so many here. Binghamton Rumble Ponies. Oh, dang! This is in Buffalo's division. Um, I'm pretty sure. No, this is double A now. Double A. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh. Philadelphia. It was the eh. dang. It was. Oh, I think I know. Oh, I like the time limit here. Yeah, Colin, you got you got ah. ten seconds. If you don't want to answer, you don't have to answer. But 
The Mets. Yep. Wow. He did he just look that Actually? up? Did he just look no. that up? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> You're looking down. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, MLB no, tweeted no. out all the affiliates. Do you have that picture no. up right now? Yeah. That's what I've got up, <laughs> no. but Colin, sure I hope we... Colin doesn't have it no. up. That's fan graphs. Uh, nope. Okay. No, no, no. All right. Look at it. He's Phone's ar- not even on. He's already, okay. he's already ruining the game, but it's all good. Hey, I, wa- hey, hey, I watch my league baseball. Next, we've got cool. the Akron Rubber Ducks. Akron. Oh, Cleveland. Yep, Colin got that one right, too. The, 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 I'm I'm picking the most outrageous names, by the way. If you haven't figured out the game yet, I was going through these and just saying, how are these names? Like, if you were a guy, like if I came up to you recently and was like, yeah, I play for the the what did I just say? Akron Rubber Ducks. You'd be like, would you think that that was cool? No. <laughs> exactly. What's their mascot's name? Ducky. I don't know. <laughs> He's probably <laughs> him and him and the Anaheim Duck probably have a, a cousin relationship. I don't yeah. know. Next, the Richmond Flying Squirrels. Oh, Pittsburgh. Eh. Oh no, Richmond, Virginia. I guess, but it, I'll just tell you this: it ain't near Richmond, Virginia. Oh, other side Ooh. of the country. Oh, uh, Seattle. Eh. San Francisco. The Richmond like Flying this. Squirrels. This is double A, by the way. Next, we'll move into what do we? Oh, there's there's a couple decent ones. Let's go to sing high single A here because there's a, there's a couple right. gems back here. We've got. <clears throat> I don't know. There's so many here that I want to mention that it's almost just I want to just mention them all. So this one I find interesting, and it is the. Where was it? I found it. Here we go. The <laughs> the Winston Salem Dash. I don't even what? know what that is. Man, that's a sick name. The Dash. That's an awesome name. The Winston yeah. Salem Dash. It's a high A East team. I don't, even, I don't even know where that's at. I'll give you a hint. It's an American League team. I'm gonna say the. Uh, I'm gonna say the uh, Miami Marlins. East Coast or West Coast? Are the Miami Marlins hey. an AL team? I'll give you no, another no, no. chance at that. Yeah, that was that was one. Moment. Eastern Eastern side or Western side? You're Tampa Bay. Central. Central. I'll let, I'll give you guys Central so that Reese has a chance. Oh, Kansas City. Nope. Eh. Chicago. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't get more than one pick. No, Colin. Say. I mean, uh, Reese. Say the second answer he said. Chicago. Yep. Oh. Ding. Chicago White Sox. Winston hey, Salem Dash. All right. So Colin's up three to one. You both have two strikes. Yeah. I got to try to yeah, find a won. really good one here. So I think I'm going to have to go back to double uh, A and it's going to be here we go. The Hartford Yard Goats. <laughs> That's an awesome name. Yeah. It's a National it's League. An AL, it's an, an NL West team. NL oh. West. Seattle Mariners. Eh. Oh. Colin, you want to answer it? You already won, but. NL, NL West team, right? Yep. No, if he gets it wrong, he doesn't win because that's three strikes for him. Wait a minute. Yeah, but I got the first three right. So? So? The game still goes. It not matter. If yeah. Somebody has to get two strikes. Oh, so you're just fouling pitches off then? Yeah, yep. he's foul. He's he's the guy sitting. He's like Brett Gardner fouling off nine pitches. NL West. Yep. It's not San Diego because they're not there. Arizona. Nope. It is the Colorado Rockies Double A team. I was really hoping it was going to be San Diego. That would have been funny. <laughs> no, no, no. I know it's not because uh, Chris Robinson, the guy that uh. I was able to go to in uh, London at center field sports, uh, played in their system. And there were a couple other honorable mentions here in AAA, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. I've always loved the Toledo Mud Hens, by the That's way. Awesome. I've always Toledo loved the Mud Toledo Mud Hens, uh, Reese. I was going to say that one, but I knew you would have got it instantly. 100%. But I love the Toledo Mud Hens. I don't know. Something about that team is always, uh, I've always liked that name. And, Are the Iron uh, Pigs Philadelphia? Yes. 
Yeah, Lehigh funny. Valley. And the other one that's very, <laughs> I don't even know when this team, if this team is new, but I've never heard of them before. The Miami Marlins AAA affiliate, I kid you not, the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Yep. I was yeah. drafted by yeah, them that's in uh, MLB The Show. And then they traded me <laughs> to Minnesota. That's the first two, right? That is that's wild. the first two, right? MLB The Show. And the El Paso Chihuahuas also is another honorable mention, which is San Diego's uh, AAA affiliate. Yeah, so yeah. hopefully yeah, we'll learn a lot about these AAA teams if, uh, if we're going to be talking Bisons this year and uh, talking about some of these teams yeah. they're going to be playing. So hopefully we get to see more of the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. I really want to know more about that team. They are the Miami Marlins AAA <laughs> affiliate. So wouldn't that be something? But with that said, that was the uh, the fun game for you guys about Triple A baseball. I, I saw that and I'm like, I got to somehow turn this into a segment for the show because some of these names are just wild. So, uh, with that said, let's talk about minor league baseball real quick. And uh, they're projected to open up their season on April 6th and uh, April 8th. So, uh, depending on the class, so uh, minor league baseball will start uh, in the uh, first week of April. And as far as that, comparing to the MLB, uh, MLB is uh, projected to open up on April 1st. Opening day is April 1st, 2021. What do you guys think of that? Do you think it's a possibility uh, that we're going to start on April 1st, uh, barring any setbacks and, you know, whatever happens with uh, COVID situations within teams? Do you think April 1st is uh, is a good uh, deadline for that? Yeah, it's better than March. I mean, last couple of years, it's been like the 27th of March they've started, which I mean, that week, like the week difference makes a huge difference in a way because, I mean, being from Canada, being here in Ontario, we know how much it could snow in the first week of April either way. I mean, like you being a Yankees fan, Reese, you being a Tigers fan, I mean, you know how the first month sometimes is just a Man, dog you, show. You, it's and, so and, tough. You, and you think it's rough for us. What about Minnesota? Yeah, Stupidly Minnesota, building an Cleveland, outdoor Pittsburgh. stadium. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice stadium, though. It is, but, but that, that, that first Minnesota, month, that first month come. isn't that first month. Well, yeah, that first month doesn't get. It's better than having the roof cave in, like the Metrodome. Yeah, but... fair point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you kind of need a roof if you have an indoor stadium. Yeah, yeah, that would help. I mean, the, the thing about starting the reason why they kept starting it at the end of March, like that last week in March, is because it was essentially the players wanted one two or three more days off during the season. That's essentially uh, what the reason behind that was. And when it's COVID and you can't really go anywhere per MLB, unless you're Justin Turner, um, you know, who gives a crap how many off days you have, because you're really only supposed to go from the ballpark to home, or maybe you 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 have like to go grocery shopping or whatever, but um, that's essentially where you're going to go. Like what, what can you possibly do on those off days besides sit around at home and watch TV? Yeah. Remember last year with Cleveland, when a uh, police sack and I forget the other guy, when they went out to that bar in Chicago Clevenger. with some buddies there and got, yeah, Clevenger. Remember that Clevenger and a uh, police sack there. They went to the bar out in Chicago with some buddies and, uh, Carrasco was just going through his, uh, cancer treatment and everything and just got back. Yep. And, uh, that's a tough look too so really for your teammates and for yourselves you really can't be going anywhere so yeah there's no place you can really go so that's why april 1st starts pretty good Mm -hmm. and uh we'll tie this into the toronto blue jays as we're going to be talking jays uh on this show uh, a fair amount uh to collins uh i guess uh to his pleasure with the Toronto Blue Jays, not uh, Reese and myself, but we know where we're located, so we got to talk Toronto Blue Jays. That's what people care about around here, so yeah. we'll talk about them, and Reese and I can just, you know, rip them apart. It's okay. But uh, with that said, well, there it works hey, out for you. The Jays hey. open against the Yankees. Perfect. I can't wait to talk about that. Can't wait. Well, I don't want to talk about that because last year in Buffalo was uh, a yeah. place. Yeah. Of, it was a house of horrors. Here. House of horrors for the Yankees in Buffalo last year. But what with up, that Dan? said, what up, Dan? Yeah, sure. The Blue Jays will open up their season in Dunedin, so where they uh, host yeah. their spring training every year. Uh, statement that uh, nice based... facility. Yeah, so nice. <laughs> it uh, for now the TD ballpark will cover the home stands of April fourteenth to the four uh, to the fourth April eighth to the fourteenth against the Angels and the Yankees, and April twenty seventh to May second versus Washington and the Atlanta Braves. So another Toronto team opening up in Florida along with uh, the Toronto Raptors who are playing their their season in Tampa Bay. 
So, Colin, what do you think about this as far as opening up in Dunedin? And obviously the main question is, do you think that uh, the ballpark is sufficient enough for Major League, uh, I guess, uh, standards? Well, if you get a chance, you listen to the Ross Stripling's podcast, a pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. It's a very good list. And um, he uh, mentions or he's had some players on. The pitchers don't want to play in Dunedin just because of how much the ball travels in the day. There's going to be a lot of home runs in Dunedin. I mean, you can see uh, – you could possibly see Vladdy Jr. hit 35 no problem this year just because playing in Dunedin, the ball, I mean, the ball's going to travel. It's it's a tough place for pitchers. Everyone thought Buffalo was bad at night. Dunedin's bad in the day. So that's going to be interesting. But I like it. It's They renovated it. Like, really, it's really nice now. Reese, we were talking before, like we went on air here, about how nice their uh, facility actually is now and how big that could be for free agency for the Jays as well. With uh, re- with that being their rehab center, and plus with Vancouver being now their high A team, you might see the Jays just stick in Dunedin because who knows if the Dunedin Blue Jays will have a season. But we actually don't know if the Vancouver Canadians will have a season, being the only Canadian team in that divi- in their division. So that will be interesting to see what happens. I mean, Reese mentioned before we went on air that it's tough to have four teams around a f- facility at once with the Buffalo Bisons having a season, hopefully, and uh, yeah. Their, their road team that they are playing and the Jays, whoever they are playing, that's tough to do. So that's going to be interesting. But we will see there. Uh, Dunedin's a great spot, and uh, I like it. Reese, what do you think about Buffalo being basically a hub city for an for an MLB team and a AAA team with the Blue Jays and the Bisons? Do you think that, that logistically and for safety reasons that that would be something that both leagues would look into, or do you think they would want to kind of avoid that situation? Uh, it, it's really all dependent on, um, and I know New York has 10% capacity, I think it is, in the state of New York. So obviously that includes the Sabres, the uh, Rangers, Islanders, any really professional sports team in the state of New York. And if you don't have fans in the stadium, I think that it is possible to do that. Again, are you going to have four different teams at the stadium at once? No. But are you going to have four different teams in the city, in hotels at once? Yeah, you're probably going to get that quite a few times. And it's logistically, it may work by just having series not have any conflicts. But in terms of COVID and, you know, you're not really wanting it to spread within the clubhouse and within the rest of the league. No, it's probably not a good idea. And if you're talking about ballparks, they had to do so much to Salem Field last year to make it usable as a major league stadium, whether that was lights. You can't even go on the property. Yeah, exactly. And it was it it was tough. Whereas you look at T D Bank ballpark in Dunedin, Florida, and they renovated it. MLB teams play there every year. It's guaranteed. They play there every year. It's just for a month. It's exhibition games but major league teams play on that diamond for a month every year and it is up to major league standards i brought up the dimensions here uh quickly for td bank ballpark in left field you got 317 center is 402 and then in right field it's 315 and yeah Yeah. i I understand the the whole argument about balls flying out of here um out of there and just having home runs galore and in my opinion, that's perfect for the game because with these time constraints that they're having and with them wanting to speed up the game and stuff and, you know, maybe speed up the slower. game doesn't make, yeah, it, and it doesn't make it as entertaining, kind of. It's what I've read from a couple of articles, but if you put home runs, like say you have a home run every inning, could you imagine there was a home run every half inning? That is a great oh, because like, <laughs> kids love home runs. Oh they yeah, they do. Like eh. they don't like they don't like a oh move the guy over from second to third. We we love that as guys who played the game, but in yeah. terms of a young kid who's maybe just in, uh, you know, t ball or rookie ball, or it's like oh, I want to see a home run. Is there gonna be a home run hit today? Like mm-hmm. that. That's what they want to see. So yeah. in terms of that, that's that's a win. But in terms of field dimensions, it's got to be TD Bank over over Salem Field. Yeah, I mean, getting the the casual fan to be interested in the game, obviously home yeah. runs helps with that. But uh, I've got a little bit more of the article here from Sportsnet, and it says the 
Jays will uh, – they've announced last week that it will sell up to 15% of capacity for the Grapefruit League games. Additional protocols for those attending games include tickets sold in pods of two or four, face coverings for entry, symptom screening, and hand sanitizing stations. So 15% for the Grapefruit League games. They haven't announced if that's going to be for the regular season games as well. But uh, what do you think about 15% capacity? And apparently they invested $600,000 into bringing lights – up to the major league standards uh, with the up with uh, additional upgrades like Reese had mentioned that they had done with Salem Field in Buffalo. So, Colin, what do you think about 15% capacity for uh, these Jays home games here? Yeah, that's good. Um, Mark Shapiro made it clear, too, for the regular season, he doesn't want to take fans from the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, geographically, Tampa Bay and Dunedin is very close. He doesn't want to take fans. He made that clear. He doesn't want to take fans from the Tampa Bay Rays because, I mean, we know how much Tampa Bay struggled having fans at the Trop. We know how much of a struggle it is at the Trop as well. So, yeah, I think that's a good yeah. good thing by Shapiro just to bring out, hey, we're not trying to take fans from the Tampa Bay Rays, so we're gonna have fifteen percent. And what we get, we get, right? It's like what the Raptors started, how the Raptors started, and that's just, that's another thing that you can compare. Masayu Jerry for the Raptors didn't like how when they the last game they played the Raptors was against Boston with fans and it was all Boston fans there. Yeah. That's gonna be the interesting thing. I like you know what it's like when Yankee fans go to the other ballparks. There's a tons. When the Red Sox go to other ballparks, there's tons. And now with how Florida is and people will still be there in April at the beginning of the season when the Jays are there. So when that series is against the Yankees, I don't think the Jays would want I mean, if it's a fifteen thousand seater stadium, I don't think they'd want three thousand Yankee fans there, in my opinion. They would want Jays fans there or any baseball fan in general, but they'd want to get their fans there. So fifteen thousand's perfect or fifteen percent's perfect. Uh it'll be interesting to see though what they do, how long that lasts having fans there, just because the COVID situation in Florida, the I mean the clubhouse there too in Florida, you have to walk from right field down to the dugout. So that's going to be another interesting thing too, because there's a lot of fan space there. I know that's going to be all blocked off, but that's going to be very interesting too in the bullpens. I guess now that are they're in the outfield wall, like behind the out right field wall, which is good now, not down the line, because you're going to have more uh, social distancing there. So that's going to be interesting to watch, see what happens there. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, always interesting in Florida with, you know, people that uh, visit down there or live down there. Uh, yeah. And there's always going to be fans from all over that the country. Team. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it's that's crazy. Where I, that's where I can see the Jays being up, where I can see the players for the Jays being like, why would we do this? But we can't have our fans there coming from Canada. Why would we want to host other teams there? Right. I know you got to make some money, but I can see that being a boiling point too for the well, for the players having other teams there well when you think about it too about all of the teams in their division the yankees their spring training facility Travel. is right in tampa bay so yeah, that's right around the corner td bank ballpark is gonna be filled with yankee fans come yeah um april 12th to 14th it's gonna be filled with yankee fans they get lucky the angels their spring training is out uh in arizona but looking at the rest of the teams atlanta they've got their uh, facility in Florida. Luckily, if the Jays don't really want to take away Tampa Bay fans, they don't play Tampa Bay at uh, what might be in Dunedin until May 21st to the 24th, a wraparound weekend series. So by then, will they be in Toronto? Eh, not sure about that. Would they be in Buffalo? Better possibility than Toronto. But I'm uh, not sure about that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 you, you don't know because, again, Ontario, Honestly, we're open yeah. again, and there's still a thousand cases per day. And that just spells Dunedin, Florida until September or October if they make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, no team's going to be allowed here right now. The Jays weren't allowed here. The Raptors were not, weren't allowed here. So um, it's interesting. And, 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 and yeah, we're going to have to save a lot of this stuff till next week. But for the last couple of minutes here, just. What do you think is going to happen here if we get a lot of postponed? Like we saw at the beginning of last season when they uh, w- when yeah. they played, there was a lot of those postponed series, and the Marlins were shut down for a while. And do you think that uh, they're going to be able to play a full 162 game season, or if they do decide to do that, or is it going to have to end up going to a points percentage or win percentage? I guess you could say uh, if they yeah. aren't able to get the whole 162 game season in. Do you think that that is something that they're looking at? 
Yeah, I mean, they're definitely looking at change because, I mean, 2020 now, 2021 is all about adapting, changing on the fly, right? You got to be quick on your feet. I think I think it's a good idea to have a point system, Brandon. Just It's going to be interesting because there's so many players on our roster. So that's a part that's going to be – like, it's hard not to have cases when you have that many players traveling all the time. I was thinking maybe – series throughout the week still you wouldn't play 162 games you play like how it was last year but in, you have like the weekly long series instead you're there for a week kind of like how hockey is how you're there for like multiple days you're in quarantine all the time you really can't go anywhere to, but i just think the weekend travel you're so much congestion with other people which is going to be interesting to me but hopefully there's not but there's always that start where you saw it in hockey, you saw it in football, you saw it in baseball last year, you saw it in the NBA. Always at the start of the year, there's always adversity, which hopefully it's not as bad. And you can limit that because that would be huge for the season. Reese, quick, quickly, what do you think about yeah. that? Yeah, I think last year they obviously, they only did divisions in like both leagues. So like Tigers, they only played teams in the AL Central and the NL Central. So that's that's nine other teams you're playing against. Where this year... You, you you're traveling coast to coast like you're playing everywhere and that hurdle is going to be something that MLB hasn't seen yet um they're gonna have to be able to figure out a way to hey like they're probably gonna have a taxi squad again it's probably gonna have to happen whether um like the NHL it's minimum of four maximum of six like probably gonna be more for baseball probably around eight to ten I would have to say but it's it, you have to if I'm the players and you like they denied starting a month late like the MLB proposed it to the MLBPA hey we start a month later we get you know some more protocols in place we figure out a way to keep you guys a little bit safer but we'll start at the end of April beginning of May and the player said no well okay now the players it's on you if you get COVID well sorry enjoy sitting at home for two weeks not being able to play probably three weeks because you'll need a little bit, you know, half a week, a week to get back into the routine, get some swings in the cage, get thrown again with guys. Like, you know, exactly. you're looking at a two to three week break if you get COVID. So, Hey, sorry, we tried to delay the season. You said no. So sorry, this is on you. You need to figure out a way to not get COVID and not expose it to yeah. the rest of the league. It's on yourself and on your team. It, I mean, I love what Bo Bichette said last year about that. Uh, right away in the first series in Tampa Bay last year, how Bo Bichette said, we're quarantined. We're doing what we have to do to have a season. We're doing it for my – I'm doing it for my teammates. I'm doing it for my team, my fans, because everyone wants baseball. I mean, it's, one, it's the best sport in the world. So everyone wants to watch. Everyone wants to watch the best players out there. So you got to do it for yourself, for your teammates, yep. for your family, for your team, for your city you have a lot on the line. There's a lot on your back. And and for guys uh, chasing it's miles, not that hard. For guys when chasing there, when, stones like Miguel Cabrera. Yeah. So close to 500 home Mike runs. Trout. So close to 3000 yeah. hits. You miss games. Well, eh, you might, cool. yeah, and if you're in Miguel Cabrera's case where you're getting up there in age, your contract's going to end in the next couple of years. You know, he's still probably going to get to those milestones, but and know, that takes hurts. away your chance. Yeah, and four, I mean, if mo- you're out for 14 days, that hurts you. And most yep. importantly, they want to grow the game of baseball because obviously it's been the the ratings and the the viewership has been down. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, even with but if the, you want to grow the game, you need the best players on the field, and you need to be playing games and not have yep. uh, you know, exactly. the the negotiating. You can't have, you can't have the negotiations yeah. be the 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 major storyline of your league with what happened last year with the and the M the the players association and the owners basically going at it even before the season had started so that obviously was not a good look for the league yeah. so hopefully it's just about baseball this year and uh, hopefully we get to talk to you guys a lot about baseball we didn't get it to a lot today but that's okay we can always save stuff for next week give you we guys a teaser time. for next week we got plenty of time oh, yeah. we're gonna be here every I'm week here. with you guys so. We'll get to the Jay stuff next week uh, with their projected lineup uh, and Colin's thoughts on some of the prospects to look out for staying with the team or uh, maybe starting in AAA but coming up uh, through the throughout the season and as well the the odds for the playoffs 
for the World Series and for the AL East. We'll get into all those odds and everything like that next week. But uh, great first show here. Glad to have you guys on board with us for uh, the baseball show that will be with you all season long. So really excited and really happy with the way that this first introductory episode went. So with that said, that's going to wrap it up for today's first installment of the Full Count MLB podcast right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network. Again, February 22nd, 2021 edition. We're excited to continue here and uh, looking forward to uh, spring training coming up. So as always, I'm one of your hosts of the network. Happy. You can follow me on Twitter at Caput13 with the Canadian Z. And you can follow my co-hosts Reese and Colin on Twitter at Reese Dumaney and at Colin Ward underscore 14. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for joining us today for the first episode and really looking forward to uh, what's to come from this show with, uh, I'm sure, a whole lot of chirps and a whole lot of uh, stories with your baseball careers. Yeah, it's going to be a fun it's year. Fun. Absolutely. Oh, fun. <laughs> and thank you once again to you baseball fans out there for tuning in and listening along with us for this episode. And once again, this is the first installment of the Full Count MLB podcast on the Armchair GM Sports Network by sports fans for sports fans. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah.